Hello everyone, today we will talk about the Crofton formula, a very useful formula to compute the length of a curve. First, let's talk about projections. If we have a direction v and a point x in the plane, we will write xv for the projection of x in the direction v. It is found by rescaling v by the inner product between x and v. Now we are able to present the Crofton formula. The length of a curve gamma is going to be one-fourth of the integral of the lengths of the projections of gamma in all directions. That is, we take all lines passing through the origin, we project our curve in each of these lines and take the average of their lengths. The one-fourth is just a proportionality constant. The integral here is a Lebesgue integral, since the function we are integrating is usually not continuous with respect to theta. If you are worried about whether this function is measurable or not, you can prove that it is by showing that the integrand is lower semi-continuous with respect to theta. This follows easily from the lower semi-continuity of length discussed in the second lesson. To prove the Crofton formula, we are going to use the theorem that characterizes the length functional. Recall that if a functional satisfies all these properties of the length functional, then it necessarily is the length functional. Our functional lambda is going to be the one that assigns to each curve the integral on the right hand side of the Crofton formula. To verify the first property, we check that the Crofton formula works for line segments. If we take a line segment of length L and a direction V, then the length of the projection of this line segment onto the line with direction V is going to be L times the cosine of the angle between such segment and the direction v, with absolute value of course. Integrating this from 0 to 2 pi we get 4 times l, but remember there was a 1 over 4 term in the formula that fixes this, so lambda of this line segment is precisely l. The next property is about reparametrizations. If gamma 1 and gamma 2 are reparametrizations of each other, then, when we project onto a direction v, the projection of gamma 1 is a reparametrization of the projection of gamma 2. This means that the lengths of these projections are going to be the same. Integrating these over all directions, we get that lambda, just like we expected, does not depend on the parametrization. The third property is about concatenation. When we have two curves with the property that one begins precisely where the other ends, the projection of the concatenation on any direction is the concatenation of the corresponding projections, so the length of the projection of the concatenation is the sum of the lengths of the projections. Integrating this with respect to all directions, we get that our functional lambda satisfies the desired concatenation property. The next property is about isometries. We begin with a curve gamma and a direction in which we project gamma. Applying an isometry T to this configuration, we obtain a curve T gamma and its projection onto a distinct direction. This new direction is precisely the one obtained by applying the rotational part of T to the previous direction. Then the length of the old projection will coincide with the length of the new projection. Integrating over all directions, we get that the value of lambda does not change after applying an isometry to the curve gamma. The last property is slightly more delicate. If we have a sequence of curves gamma n converging pointwise to a curve gamma, when we project onto a certain direction, the sequence of projections, the projection of gamma 1, the projection of gamma 2, the projection of gamma 3, and so on, converges to the projection of gamma. Then, by the lower semi-continuity property, the integral of the lengths of the projections of gamma is less or equal to the integral of the limits of the lengths of the projections of the curves gamma n. Since these integrands are non-negative, we can apply Fatou's lemma to conclude that such integral is less or equal than the limit of the corresponding integrals. This shows that lambda satisfies the lower semi-continuity property. Since lambda satisfies all those properties, we can apply the theorem we mentioned at the beginning to conclude that the Crofton formula is valid for all curves. Now it is time to start talking about three-dimensional curves. 
A three-dimensional curve is a continuous function that takes a real interval to the three-dimensional space. Just like in the two-dimensional case, we can think of this function as three separate continuous real functions put together, x of t, y of t, and d of t. Basically, everything we have done so far for two-dimensional curves works as well for three-dimensional curves, with the notable exception of the Jordan curve theorem we mentioned in the first lesson. On the other hand, the Crofton formula has to be slightly modified to deal with 3D curves. In the three-dimensional space, when we have a point x and a direction v, we can again project x onto the direction v. Again, we denote it as xv, and it can be obtained by rescaling v by the inner product of x with v. In the three-dimensional space, we can project in a different way. For a point x and a vector v, we can project x to the plane perpendicular to v. We denote it by xv perp, and notice it can be computed as x minus xv. This is because x equals xv plus xv perp. xv is the component parallel to v, and xv perp is the component perpendicular to v. Then we can provide Crofton formulas in the three dimensional space using these projections. Recall that the Crofton formula for 2D curves is the following. For three-dimensional curves, one has one Crofton formula for each form of projection we have. In the first one, the proportionality constant is 2 pi, and for the second one, the proportionality constant is pi squared. I'll leave to you the proof of these formulas. And as a hint, I ask you to first notice that this theorem that characterizes the length functional also works in the three-dimensional space with the exact same proof as in the two-dimensional plane. Good luck, and see you next time.